How worried you should be about H5N1, the bird flu virus spreading on dairy farms in the United States, depends on who you are. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has described the current H5N1 risk to the general public as low. The risk that the virus poses is tempered by the fact that it doesn't spread easily among people, yet. Right now, public health experts have the difficult task of urging authorities who can do something about H5N1 to take action while maintaining public trust. Americans have just been through a pandemic that resulted in over 1 million U.S. lives lost. They may feel weary of more bad news or fear-based messaging. It is not easy, but is important to communicate that the threat level for most people is low, but that if nothing is done, it could become quite high. Experts need to be clear that currently the levers of action are squarely in the hands of government leaders and agricultural interests, not in the hands of the general public. But public attention is crucial to ensuring that authorities find the will to act. No one knows whether H5N1, if left unchecked, will become the deadly pandemic that public health experts like me worry it could. Many of us have been watching H5N1 with alarm for more than 20 years. As an epidemiologist, I join those who are concerned that as H5N1 continues to infect animals and people exposed to them, it could become a greater threat. The virus could mutate to gain the ability to infect people more easily. Because we don't have immunity to this virus, a version that becomes highly contagious would probably cause a new pandemic. Influenza viruses change more rapidly than others and have created four pandemics since the start of the 20th century. It's been nearly three months since the U.S. government announced an outbreak of the bird flu virus on dairy farms. The World Health Organization considers the virus a public health concern because of its potential to cause a pandemic, yet the U.S. has tested only about 45 people across the country. We're flying blind, said Jennifer Nuzzo, director of the Pandemic Center at the Brown University School of Public Health. With so few tests run, she said, it's impossible to know how many farm workers have been infected or how serious the disease is. A lack of testing means the country might not notice if the virus begins to spread between people, the gateway to another pandemic. We'd like to be doing more testing. There's no doubt about that, said Nirav Shah, Principal Deputy Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC's bird flu test is the only one the Food and Drug Administration has authorized for use right now. Shah said the agency has distributed these tests to about 100 public health labs in states. We've got roughly a million available now, he said, and expect 1.2 million more in the next two months. But Nuzzo and other researchers are concerned because the CDC and public health labs aren't generally where doctors order tests from. That job tends to be done by major clinical laboratories run by companies and universities, which lack authorization for bird flu testing. As the outbreak grows, with at least 114 herds infected in 12 states as of June 18, researchers said the CDC and FDA are not moving fast enough to remove barriers that block clinical labs from testing. In one case, the diagnostics company Neelix Labs was on hold with a query for more than a month. Clinical labs are part of the nation's public health system, said Alex Grenninger, assistant director of the University of Washington Medicine Clinical Virology Laboratory. Pull us into the game. We're stuck on the bench. The CDC recognized the need for clinical labs in a June 10th memo. It calls on industry to develop tests for the H5 strain of bird flu virus, the one circulating among dairy cattle. The limited availability and accessibility of diagnostic tests for influenza A, H5, poses several pain points, the CDC wrote. The points include a shortage of tests if demand spikes. Researchers, including former CDC Director Tom Frieden and Anthony Fauci, who led the nation's response to COVID, cite testing failures as a key reason the U.S. fared so poorly with COVID. Had COVID tests been widely available in early 2020, they say, the U.S. could have detected many cases before they turned into outbreaks that prompted business shutdowns and cost lives. In an article published this month, Nuzzo and a group of colleagues noted that the problem wasn't testing capability but a failure to deploy that capability swiftly. The U.S. reported excess mortality eight times as high as other countries with advanced labs and other technological advantages. A COVID test vetted by the WHO was available by mid-January 2020. Rather than use it, the United States stuck to its own multistage process, which took several months. Namely, the CDC develops its own test then sends it to 